Coming up next, Frank and Mary in Framingham with your hosts, Grace O'Donnell and me, Arthur Bergeron. Our guest today, Lisa Urshkernis, Social Services Supervisor at the Callahan Center. You're going to love her. Welcome to this episode of Frank and Mary in Framingham. I'm Grace O'Donnell, Director of Elder Services at the Callahan Center. And I am Art Bergeron, an attorney. I do nothing but elder law. I work at Myrick O'Connell, biggest firm outside of the city of Boston, 70 lawyers. Everybody does what they like because there are so many lawyers. I like this. This show, though, is not about elder law. It's about my friends Frank and Mary. You may have seen them in one of the presentations that I've done in the past where I always talk about Frank and Mary and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. If you can get the joke, you're old enough to be my client. And the fact that their goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. If, if they live in Framingham, that's where they want to die. They don't want to die in California. They don't want to move to Texas with their kids. They want to be here. This is where your friends are. It's where your community is. And so the question is, who are the people that you need to know? And what are the programs you need to know about so that you can stay right here in Framingham forever? My co-host on this show is Grace O'Donnell, the person who actually knows all of these people and who finds these great guests that we're going to have on this program. So, Grace, who do we have today? Hi, Arthur. I'm really excited to introduce to you and the audience Lisa Uskernis, our social services supervisor. And she has put together many of the programs that we'll be talking about today. Thank you again for having us here today. I know oh, a lot thanks of thanks for being willing to do this. <laughs> right? This is a lot of fun. Right? <laughs> Thank you. I know a lot of people think about coming to a senior center for the exercise programs that we offer or the special cultural events. But what a lot of people don't realize is we also offer some real assistance for people in meaningful ways. And I'd like to talk about that more to a greater extent today here with Lisa Ushkernis, our social services supervisor. So Lisa, can you give me an idea of some of the most frequent kinds of situations that people bring to your attention that they need assistance with? So in other words, you don't run the bingo game. I don't I was do told bingo. I couldn't even say the word. But, but. <laughs> well, more than bingo. But, but, um, yeah, we get a lot yeah. of phone calls for information and a referral. People yeah. have no idea where to begin. So oftentimes people think to call us and when they do we kind of do a little assessment on the phone about what all their needs are we do a comprehensive assessment so we can discuss benefits you know options consult with them on long-term planning um, downsizing a lot of people don't know resources until they need them and then they're in a crisis so ideally we have these conversations earlier than later I think what's important, we have a lot of adult children who have family members, older adults who live in Framingham. They're the ones calling us. We will mail them information, talk to them on the phone, have a meeting with the family. You know, whenever they call, we try to, you know, follow through with that. And that's pretty amazing. I mean, I think most seniors would have no idea that the, that the senior center provides those kinds of services that you act. And, and, and I know for myself, you know, when I talk to seniors, right, the hardest part about being a senior is you got all kinds of different problems, but the programs are all over the place. You know, there's a little bit here, there's a mm -hmm. little bit there. And so to actually have somebody who can kind of decode all of that for you, that's like a, that's a terrific service. It's really helpful, I think, for a lot of people. And so what happens, is there a most common thing that people call about? Is there a, or is it just really um, all over I the map? I think the most common story I hear is yeah. that I'm trying to live in Framingham. I don't want to leave my home. I can't afford my water bill, my tax bill, my oil bill. How can I remain independent at home? And we try to problem solve with people about what benefits they may qualify for, fuel yeah. assistance, tax deferral, um, food stamps, SNAP benefits. Yeah. Um, give them some suggestions on possible future housing that they should look into now. Um, uh, outside private pay programs that can keep you independent if you have disabilities you need a little bit of help, help in your house in your home and that's going to be all over the place I mean that because each each person's circumstance is just going to be it's just going to be totally different right so it seems to me I, re I remember that you actually have a social service background from before you started doing this oh right? yes mm -hmm. 
You're like you're, you're right. You're originally a, uh, you're a, a, a social. You have a, a degree Clin in social. Clinical yeah. social worker. Right. And I've worked right. in hospitals. I've worked outpatient, and I've worked a lot in the community, which is a nice combination. So a lot of people do call because they are in the hospital and they go to yeah. rehab, and then their whole life has changed, and they need to know about the fact that we have durable medical equipment. We have walkers, wheelchairs, rollators. Um, people often will donate these durable medical equipment products when they don't need them anymore. You have stuff there, like right at the senior center? Yes, so you, I, important is to call ahead because we're not a store. If you call ahead, we'll let you know if we have what you're looking for. We lend it out. Ideally, we'd like to get it back. If we have 50 walkers, you can keep the walker forever. Um, if we don't have it, the Masons now have a program on Tuesday evening, a big warehouse up in the North Shore. So if somebody's looking for a hospital bed or something that unique that we don't usually have, um, we can give them that referral. Um, and they're able to call and find out if they have that you know, particular durable medical equipment. And that's like a, so that's like a statewide program. Because once again, people, who would know this, right, unless you were a Mason? Who would have any idea that there were those kinds of yes. resources mm -hmm. that you could plug into? Because we collaborate with outside agencies and yeah. resources, we have a good dialogue with people about what's available and what, what is out there. Yeah. A lot of people um, are in the hospital and then they're not sure where they should go for rehab. We can't say this is the best place to go. We have to give two or three referrals. We might be able to give a little bit of a description that you know they have a large family area to visit. They have a lot of outdoor areas. Right. Parking's a little tricky. We can give that kind of information. Um, it's a smaller nursing home. It's a smaller rehab. It's much bigger. They have a memory program, so we can be more detailed. We're happy to mail information to people as well. Um, people don't want to talk about it till they need it, and I, ideally, again. If you're thinking of going to assisted living or you're thinking of going to senior housing, which is subsidized, yeah. this is the time to talk about it is now before you need it. So you can go take a look and see what's a good fit for you. What's a good fit? That's right. Is a lot, once again, a lot of times we'll, we'll talk to seniors and say, you know, it's like, remember when you took your kids to the college shop, mm -hmm. right? And, they, and they're going around and they're going around and then they hit one and they go, oh, Ma, it feels good. It this feels is right. the right one. Yeah. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it's the same thing. It's the same thing, right. and, it, and it isn't like, I would, for one of a better term, the chandelier. It isn't like the one big thing. It's just that, it, and talking to people who are there. That's right. right. And I get a lot of feedback and, as well as the other social worker. We get oh. feedback from people who have been there and say, you know, this is, was a good experience for these reasons, or you know, the food wasn't wonderful, but you know, right. everything else was really terrific. Just like college, food is important <laughs> for everybody. Well, yeah, yeah. <coughs> Especially that's Excuse one of the reasons why you don't want to leave your house, right? Mm -hmm. I can cook my own meals. Mm -hmm. I don't need anybody to be cooking my meals for me. So it's it's bad enough, right, to be leaving. Right. right? The other thing I think important is um, people don't know people don't know where to start. So often a family member will call us and say, you know, we're thinking of this and that. You know, my mother doesn't want to go to rehab. She wants to go home. What is available? And there's very little available if you don't go to rehab that you don't have to pay privately for. Right. If you do go to rehab or you get discharged from a hospital, you do get the VNA who comes for a number of weeks, a social worker, a PT, OT for a limited period of time. And then you have to negotiate recovering by yourself at home and, and what is available out there. Unfortunately, a lot of programs and a lot of services you have to pay. And we try to talk to folks that you worked hard your whole life, you have savings. This is the time to use it, <laughs> is to help you maintain your independence um, yes. and not depend on family members that you don't want to depend on or asking neighbors, you know, that kind of thing. And I, but I suppose that's, that's also, that's a really hard to get people to believe that, especially people in the 90s now. You know, so they're still remembering, kind of living in some during some hard times, right? Mm -hmm. And they just can't imagine. I, I regularly have people that I talk to, and I, and I'll say, trust you're not going to run out of money. You, it is impossible that you will run out of money before the end of the. They just won't believe me. Mm -hmm. They just won't mm -hmm. believe. Me. So so the, and so the notion of actually having to pay for some of this stuff is really hard. Well, we get a lot but of you must, you must hit that all the time yeah. there. There are also a number of programs that can assist people. So there's the 
area agencies on aging. So Bay Path is the one that oversees the Metro West area. And for people who are below certain incomes, they are able to offer some services at uh, either no cost or a sliding scale fee for people. And that's part of the role of the social service staff at the various councils on aging is to inform people about these other programs that are out there so that they know to ask those questions and aren't paying out of pocket for things that they are are other resources that can apply to them. So in, in your role as the director, has, has that really been a, a place where, where, where you, or has it been and will it continue to be a place where you really see that that's the, an expanding role of the senior center is playing this kind of, because that, that is not the senior center of 30 years ago. It really, it really has. You're right well, about that. And, and you know. the reason why that has taken on more prominence, Arthur, is because people are living longer. Not only are we living longer, because of medical um, interventions, right. we're not dying from heart attacks right. as early. <clears throat> we are we're recuperating. We're uh, having knees replaced. Yeah, but it's we're a success. Actually, I mean, it's very, it is. It's a big, it reflects but because success. we're living yeah. longer, it gives our bodies more of an opportunity for other things to break down. And so we need some more supports along the way. And right. there's no harm in asking for some help for those for supports those so yes. that you can continue living as as healthy and as independently as you want to. And that's partly why we encourage people to check in with our social service staff. Uh, if somebody has suffered a loss recently, they've lost their spouse that they've had all their life, our staff can help guide them to either sign on for a bereavement support group or to even do some brief one-on-one -on -one counseling. Sometimes even just something as simple as that can just help somebody take a different perspective on, on a circumstance. So do you have support groups right that work that operate really kind of right out of the right out of the Callahan yeah, Center? We have about nine groups that are drop-in groups. You don't have to sign up ahead of time. Yeah. If you go once, you're not sure, you don't have to go again. You might go a few a few times and connect with other people that you have something in common with. Uh, they're all free. Can you just talk about, just to give people a sense of the sure. variety of those the, groups? The important one that I think is really essential, we have two caregiver support groups, one during the day and one in the evening. And we all know that a lot of older adults are caring for their teenage kids, younger kids, and their adult parents. At the and same time at, sometimes. At the same yeah. time. Yeah. And, you know, the designated daughter who lives in Framingham taking care of her parents frequently gets feedback from outside siblings who don't live here telling that person what to do. That's giving them terrific advice, I'm sure. <coughs> of right? Yeah, I mean, it's not unusual. What's, what's the problem here? What is, right? Yeah, 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 like, how come you didn't do this, or why don't you call that? Right. Uh, it's not unusual after the holidays, Thanksgiving and Christmas, Hanukkah, that we get a lot of phone calls, my mother's declined, what's out there for her, what I thought was happening is not happening, she can't drive anymore. We've had that discussion. What is what available for transportation? Do? So it really, so this season, like, because I, I bet a lot of people come home for Thanksgiving. A and, lot, right? yeah. And mm -hmm. they're seeing them, and especially if if the if the senior is, has lost some of their mobility, that means everyone's coming here, right. and all of a sudden you're and you're like, oh my God, right? Right. Then we I have a Parkinson's uh, support group that I run, and I co-lead it with a retired internist. And that's really a group that is helpful for people who have recently been diagnosed or who have had Parkinson's for a long time. Mm -hmm. Many spouses or partners come with them and they kind of support each other as well. We have low vision, we have a drop-in bereavement group which is every other um, week. That's been going on for over 15 years. We're really pleased about that. And people will go for a short time and they make stop and then decide, you know what, Something's going on. I, I think I should go and talk to other people about right. kind of what's getting stirred up with me, especially around the holidays. And I suppose one of the, once again one of the things that's nice about Framingham, as opposed to many of the surrounding communities, is your total population is big enough, right, that you can have support groups that aren't just like you're seeing. Oh, Mary, nice to see you again. You know, it's, it isn't like mm -hmm. two people in the right that's because it's point. happening across a whole bunch of people mm -hmm. in a range from a range of incomes. Because that's the other thing. You know, you get to be our right. well. So you folks are still young. I'm turning 70 in January. So this is a, Well, you know, I'm very We're excited about this. We're closer than you think. <laughs> I'm very excited about this. But as I tell people, I said, you know, you get to our age, it's like fame and fortune. That's, it's all about getting a good night's sleep. Yeah. You know, it's, and, 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 and so you have a lot of people here who can identify with that. And you do have some great assisted livings. Mm -hmm. So do, do the assisted living folks 
because um, you do have several right here mm -hmm. in Framingham. Mm -hmm. Ever come to the senior center to just kind of talk as, I can take to talk to folks about mm -hmm. what's going on there? We have quite a few of them who will come, and they will do something like host a luncheon yep. or a special event for people so that they get to know, gee, wow, this chef really cooked a terrific meal. I might oh, want to check great out that point. assisted living. That's a great point. So you have the chef come and actually, yes. Right. And uh, we don't allow any of the presenters to actually um, market their information yeah. or their programs, yeah. but they are there. People can help avail themselves of the cards or materials that they leave there. So none of this is a hard sell from any of these vendors, but all of the assisted living locations and the long-term care facilities in Framingham really have a good connection with our social services staff. And we can give people, um, you know, suggestions. You know, we hear from people directly who have gone there, how happy they are, and we share or that not, information. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And once again, it's very on the ground information. So how do you how do you folks interact with Bay Path Elder Services with the, the kind of the 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 you call them the agent the area agency on aging, mm -hmm. right? Uh, well, they have funding that they make available to each of the various communities mm -hmm. based on where those funds come. So we have, in fact, been the recipient of funds from them for an LGBT outreach program here in Metro West with I four see. other councils on aging in the area. Uh, so we're connecting with people in the LGBT community, realizing very often they are isolated and alone. They may have lost their spouse or partner. And in many cases, they may have become estranged from their family. So we're trying to let people know we can be your next family. Right. Um, and that's a real us out. And that's a real challenge. I remember mm -hmm. speaking to, to one, of, one of those folks who was doing a program over in, in Natick who was just talking about you know, folks who during their lifetimes, when they were working, right, they were in, that was their life, is they were in the work community, yeah. right, and they were going into a, in a whole number of places, but they didn't necessarily have a community here, right? right? And then mm -hmm. to be dealing with that in that generation where there really is some, you know, the, the place where there's a lot of remaining tension over that issue, you know, and the notion of even being concerned about who to get as a home care aid. Because right. mm -hmm. you don't want a home care aid walking in that you think is going to give you grief, mm -hmm. you know, because of mm -hmm. your lifestyle. And stuff. Right. So to be able to, for you folks to be able to help kind of help people figure that out. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of navigation with a lot of other people in the community. That's a good way to put it. it is, navigation. You know, it yeah, is. You know, it's and true. It's, you you only want a, so, a certain amount of navigation and then you had enough and then sometimes you need a little bit more. Right. And so many people want to go to assisted living. I'm ready to go to assisted living and they don't realize it's a lot of money. So what are your other options if you can't go to assisted living? Or how do you pull all your assets together to make that be possible? Right. So that's part of the discussion um, that people have. If you require long-term care because you have lots of physical needs, you can no longer remain in your home. And I want to stress, require long-term care. Not that they're putting you in long-term care. You require it. Um, there's a whole because it's just not safe to be at home. Correct. Point for which, a variety right. of reasons. It's so great to be at home, except when it's when it, you can't. When, when it's, it's not, not possible. Yeah. That's right. Um, and there's a whole complicated way to get Medicaid for long-term care. The application is really overwhelming and stressful. So you know we refer to geriatric attorneys, like people at your at your place. Um, other people who have family members that work on that part of the of the formula. The other thing that people don't realize, if you are in a rehab or you are in long-term care, you're not happy there, you can transfer to another location. You can move. People don't think that you can, but you actually can. Um, we also give a lot of consultation about hospice. That's a Medicare benefit you paid for your whole life. And people, you know, are overwhelmed and there's a lot of crises and a lot of medical, acute medical situations and then people are like, oh, should we get hospice? Well, we kind of talk about what does that look like and give people options of places that they can call <clears throat> and, and, you know, interview people and, and see if it's a good fit. And once again, you give them this notion of trying to deal with that really early on as opposed to right when you're in the middle of the crisis, mm -hmm. right? People don't make great decisions in the middle of a right. crisis. Right. And this, this I, I know we've been doing, we've been doing presentations actually this fall around for, for, for Mary, in our example, we have Frank and Mary. We did, did Frank and Mary at 70, and then Frank and Mary at 80, and now we're doing one with Mary, and Frank's dead, and Mary's 90. And a part of it is making the last year of your life as good as it can be, mm -hmm. and kind of facing the fact that for very few people anymore do you just drop dead. So typically, 
that you're going to kind of know ahead of time. We used, I just used the metaphor. It's like you're in the boat, and you can see the shore. Now, you're not at the dock, but you can see the shore, mm -hmm. right? And you know it's coming. And so to try to figure that out. <coughs> And, I, and, and once again, the services are all over the place. And for, for you, to, to, for them to be, for folks to be able to come to a safe place, to a safe place, right? This is my senior center, you know, especially if they've been, if they know some folks there and have people help mm -hmm. to, to navigate that, that's going to be a big deal. Could, right? could I mention yeah. one thing, Arthur? Yeah. Although the, each Council on Aging is available for people from every community, um, it's not just for Framingham a residents. We encourage people who are seeking out social services to go to their particular <coughs> community. Because, for instance, Framingham may have some programs specific to its Framingham residents to help them in mm -hmm. these other more sort of crisis situations. Natick might have something else that we're not aware of. So right. in that one circumstance, we recommend that people go to their own particular community for the social service assistance <coughs> in case there might be something that is available to them that we are not aware of. That could be special, right? Yeah. Right, yeah. And, it's, and it's only yeah. going to be available to them. Um, mm -hmm. What we know to be true is that people who are socially isolated have acute depression at times. And, you know, they're, they don't work anymore, so they don't have any friendships. Their friends have moved to Florida. They've passed away. Their kids are doing right. their own lifestyle. Right. Even in the old, they even in their, <coughs> yeah, like they never moved, moved, but down. their neighborhood moved away from them. Right. Yeah. So yeah. we're really keen on trying to get people to come to the Callahan Center. We're happy to meet them at the door. We sit down and look at the, the calendar. What might you like to try to do? I can give, and anybody else can give a little feedback on what the programs are like. We, yeah. you know, we suggest try a couple of programs. And frequently you will see people that you know from church or that you know from the synagogue or that you know from your kids' daycare or you knew them in, from rehab and you see them at, at Tai Chi or at yoga. So it's a nice community. Um, and I always think about it as a community college. You come, you do yeah. your activities, and it's not all bingo. Again, it's right. discussion groups, cultural programs, mindfulness meditation, our support groups, chair volleyball. We have, we have a lot to offer, and it's all, most of it is free. And people are taxpayers. They should come to the Kalian Center because they've paid for this a long time. It's their taxpayer dollars at work. Mm -hmm. So you were talking about transportation. So is there, is there any transportation option for folks who, who, who want to get there, but they just don't want to be get it going out and dealing with Framingham traffic? But I don't blame them. Yes, we, right? Framingham we, traffic is not pretty sometimes. Yeah. We now have a fully handicapped accessible 12 passenger <coughs> van in our program that we'll be doing in January. Mm -hmm. Randy Aylesworth, the assistant director, will be focusing specifically on our transportation options. Oh, that's great. So we're going to have on our van. That's, but but that's one terrific. of the pieces that Lisa can talk to is we have a number of volunteer programs related to transportation. So I'll let Lisa handle that yes. piece of it. So we have a number of people that are volunteers that will take people to the grocery store, yeah. to the hospital, to rehab, to PT, to go to the hairdresser. Um, we really need people who are willing to drive to Southboro. Or but it's so far Maynard, away, Southboro. Or, or Come you on. know, Newton. Yeah. Um, yeah. Those are very hard drive, dri drivers, volunteer, volunteer drivers to secure. So we really need a lot of people to do that. Um, and, and we should emphasize that because when we were doing the thing about Frank and Mary at 70, you know, and we were talking about the fact, when you're Frank and Mary and you're 70, this is the time that you need to be giving, right? Later on, you know, you gotta be contributing to the Faber Bank here, mm -hmm. right? Because later on, you may need a withdrawal because among seniors, Good it's point. like, we're all in this together, right? Because the kids aren't around, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. so, if, so unless we're supporting each other, there aren't gonna be supports. right? Right, yes. and that's a really, really important thing because, you, you, for example, you can't be, it, you know, you, you know, your mother is, shouldn't be driving right now, you know, but she's, but she's in Framingham, and she's in a suburban, and, and so if she's not driving, she's nowhere, You're unless really there is this this network, because she mm -hmm. can't afford to be Ubering every place. She right. doesn't want to try to figure out the app, you know. <laughs> she want, right, forget that's it. Important. She's never going to do it, yeah. right? But, but to have a friend, you know, or a person, and, and that's where I think the Callahan Center plays a, such a vital role in that, because mm -hmm. it is the place through which people can be doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. It isn't just taking care of your neighbor, although many, there's a lot, you, you see those all the time, there's many right. of those, right? 
but it's really helping the community. Mm -hmm. We yeah. also tell people about the ride, which is if you're, if you're disabled, um, you're able to get a ride um, into Boston or around the area. Yeah. That's something. And then there's a patient navigator program, the Jewish Family Service for Riders, which, which is truly a medical escort. They will pick you up. They'll get you into the... 10th floor at New England Medical Center, whatever hospital you happen to be at. They'll actually go to the 10th floor? Yes. They'll wow. go to the lab. They'll take notes for you. They're That's truly great. a medical escort. But yeah. you have to, like anything else, you have to call ahead of time. You can't call and say, I need a ride to Newton Wellesley Hospital yeah, I'm on late. Tuesday. I need a, I need a ride. <laughs> so the mo the, the, if we have advance notice, it, we could be helpful to yeah. get somebody a ride for the most part. We also have emergency taxi vouchers for emergencies only, and yeah. usually it's a medical emergency. So, so from your perspective, looking forward, right, because you've been here for a while and you're always kind of in your head going, ooh, I wish I could do this. Where do you think things are going? What, 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 what things would you like to see in the ideal world at, at, or what things would you like to expand most in the, at, in the ideal world? Well, certainly we could benefit from having another uh, person in the social services department. Uh, Lisa and Cheryl and Martha and Sam are all uh, working busy? very busy, busy. days. Uh, Overextended, I would say, <laughs> yeah. regularly. Uh, and so <coughs> what we could really use is having somebody who could be out there in the community more, connecting with people who don't know to give us a call, don't know how helpful Lisa and Cheryl can be. Lisa right. just touched on several of the programs they can assist people with. So she a has, dozen, she has exactly right. a, a much longer list. So we encourage people, get to know your social services staff, let, let them know what situations you're facing. They may be able to smooth some things out for you now or at least put some information in your head for when you do encounter this right. five or ten years down the road or for you to even be able to mention to a neighbor who is struggling, you might be doing fine, but you might have a friend who doesn't us. know that the center <clears throat> exists for them. And so that's really what we're trying to do is get the word out. And so we're hoping by having this show here on the cable access, that more people will be become aware of it and make use of us. Pick up the phone, send us an email, drop in if you can. And, and, and we'll, we'll, we're going to be asking our friends, and it's, it's so kind of the folks here at Framingham Access to, to be willing to do this show, and this is the first one, a, a very appropriate show, and we'll be asking them to do a banner that ideally has your, your contact information. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line here is pretty clear. Whether you're Frank and Mary and you're 70 or 80 or 90 or whatever, you need to go to the senior center. You need to go to the Callahan Center to find out, to find out what they, how they can help you, and to find out through them how you can help others yeah. who are like not like them, but like me, old <laughs> people that need your help. You know, it's really important because we're all in this together. You, there's a great community here, and there's a great a lot of people that want to stay here, grew up here, mm -hmm. or have worked here, been here for a long. They want to stay here, but these services are going to be key. So. Thank you very much, Grace. This is a great, this Thank is a great, you, a great beginning show. Thank you, Lisa. You're welcome, Arthur. Thanks for watching. We'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Framingham. Thank you.